This site of Must Farm is one of the most extraordinary finds anywhere in northwestern Europe. We've actually got a in situ settlement of about 3,000 years old, which has collapsed in situ because of a fire into a watery environment and gives us absolutely perfect preservation. On a site like this, where you have all different types of material being exposed, it's an ideal place to actually, as a test bed, for applying all sorts of different scientific methods to actually get real detailed analysis about past domestic life. And of course our students have, a, you know, it's obviously a lecture course, but they do loads and loads of practicals. And part of those practicals is to be actually be in the field, feel what, it like, what it's like to actually retrieve primary data at source, which is the sort of thing they see interpreted in a textbook, but actually see how you get it out of the ground how you need to treat it, how you perhaps sample a site. What we're digging here is an area that's technically outside of the houses. Um, not sure what it was used for. We just want to expose these timbers and wood chips we've got so we can see where they're positioned, um, hopefully learn something about what's going on. Um, I'm using a wooden tool to clean the beams because the metal ones we usually use would damage the delicate surface of the wood. Must Farm is an incredible site because waterlogged sites like this are so rare and the level of preservation we're getting is so incredibly high. Here in this box we have uh, some poo that we found that we've excavated from this area. Um, I'm not sure if it's animal or, animal or human but I presume it's human because we're outside of the uh, area of the roundhouse behind me and it's been suggested that this could be an area of waste disposal or um, they're using it as some kind of latrine. You can see here that the wood is quite extensively charred and even in the soil itself is full of charcoal and you get that across the site. Um, the entire site was destroyed probably in one go by a massive fire. We don't know what started it. There's some suggestion it might have been an attack rather than an accidental fire. We've got three pieces of wood here from the roundhouse structures at Must Farm. And by looking at these in an archaeological context, we can tell a lot more about how the structure looked, the kind of weight it was supporting, and how the fire affected that that ultimately led to its destruction. So this one, for instance, we can see it's got kind of a blistered burn going on here, whereas here it's straight and black. So from that, we can tell where it was in the roundhouse and use that to build a bigger picture about what the site actually looked like overall. People lived here and occupied these spaces and these were their homes and we're always conscious that we're kind of invaders and looking in on the past. It's very much about looking through a window, not trying to impose our own views on what might have gone on here. The academics at Cambridge are world leaders in their field, obviously, and it's, it's a real opportunity to work with them, not under them. So they're always encouraging us to extend our own skills. Archaeology just seemed like the perfect choice. I love the combination of the intellectual work you do and then the physical hands-on stuff as well. It's really good. Before I came to Cambridge, I was working full-time as a secretary since I left school. I wanted to come and become a full-time student and Cambridge was a hugely exciting place to come and be a student. But it is amazing how much you learn just in eight weeks. You think at the start of the term, I'm never going to be able to do all these essays. I'm never going to be able to write 12 essays in a term, but you do, and you improve so quickly. Often doing this practical work is the thing that really makes you decide whether you want to be a professional archaeologist or not uh, in the future, or go on to do a particular aspect of research. And that's absolutely crucial on why we bring people into the field, uh, so they can get that experience and get that exposure. Dear world, yours.